Tom Brown here. Welcome to the second uh, uh, in the series, The Magic of the Microphone. We talked about what would be the perfect microphone and that we have to have compromises because of uh, engineering capabilities. So I'd like to look at some of those compromises with actual mics. Most of this uh, is, is being picked up just, by, just now on a Rode Classic 2 valve mic. I've got it and I'm using it. Uh, we're not looking at that really. Uh, I've got a Mackie mixing desk here with uh, good mic inputs going through to Audacity. And I'm going to switch between with the mute buttons here when I use the other mics. So if we look at the first thing, it says, transcribe every aspect of the voice faithfully. Okay, I don't know if we can look at that really. It's difficult for you to tell because you can't hear my voice acoustically. So let's look at the next one. Wouldn't add anything. Well, the balance does change with cardioid mics. We'll get into that in a minute. So actually, as I get closer to the microphone, you might hear that the balance changes and it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And I've got a bass cut on here. I don't like using bass cuts, but with this particular mic, it picks up rumble from the traffic and stuff. So I'm going to take the bass cut off. And this is it without the bass cut. You can hear if I go down low there. There it is with the bass cut. There it is without the bass cut. There it is with the bass cut. So it actually makes a difference to the tone down there. Um, I'm going to leave it cut because we're not really looking at that. But that's the Rode Classic. I have here an SM58 and a really cheap mic, I assume it is, feels it, that came in a job lot of broken mics and stuff, but I was after one particular mic in that job lot and got it and uh, I thought, well, let's see. So if I take the room mic, the Rode mic off, this is the SM58. Do I need to have this a bit louder? I think I possibly do. This is the SM58, yeah, a bit louder, so it matches up. So that's the SM58 compared to the room mic coming up. This is the room mic, the road, you can hear a bit of a difference. So something's going on, let's go to the cheap one. This is the Hitachi, I'm gonna turn this up a bit as well. This is the Hitachi, immediately I notice it's kind of grainy up there and it's a bit, that's a bit of a problem with uh, the breath there. But actually, not too bad. Oh, there's something which is bad. There's a hum that it's picking up from somewhere which the others don't. So I don't know what that's about. Anyway, I think that's probably enough of that one for the minute. So they do add something. When you get closer, they get bassier. That's not really adding. That's altering a balance. But you can hear there's differences between them already. All right would not cause feedback or pick up any other instruments. Well, most of these vocal mics that you're going to be using are what's called unidirectional or cardioid. So if you imagine a heart shape with the point of the heart up there, it means they pick up mostly there, not so much at the side, and hopefully none at all here. Let's see if we can hear that in, uh, in action. This is the SM58. I'm on axis at the front there. As I bring it round to the side, you can hear a slight difference in tone. And as I continue to bring it round to the side, more and more difference in tone. And as you can hear there, it's projecting pretty much. As I come to the back there, you can hear it's projecting a lot. I don't know if you can see that from the side. So it's projecting a lot there, picks up a bit more from the side. And as I come on axis there, you hear more what you'd expect to hear. I'm going to swap this out for a hypercardioid microphone. This is a bear M88. I'm not sure I've got the right one. Um, and is a, this is hyper, hypercardioid. So let's, as I uh, come around to the side here, come around to the side here, I don't know if you can notice there's quite a bit of rejection there. And then as I come around here, it does get a little bit louder. So hypercardioid rejects more. Sorry. Hypercardioid, re hypercardioid rejects more at the side, but allows a bit of leakage there. Thinking behind this is that the big speakers are mostly to the side. So the more you can reject, the less feedback you're likely to get. Feedback is the microphone picking up sound from the speakers, getting amplified again and coming out of the speakers, being picked up again, and you get this loop and it ends up in a ring at various frequencies. You want to know what feedback is. 
So if you can stop the sound entering, you can't stop it entering, responding, then uh, you can get more gain before, uh, which Mike was on there for a minute, which uh, before feedback. So this hypercardioid rejects sound more at the side and sacrifices a bit of pickup here because the thinking is you're not going to have your monitors right there. You're probably going to have them there, there, and the biggies are probably going to be there. In effective use, let me put them both on. Got rid of the room. SM58, Bayer Dynamic M88, SM58, SM58. The reason I'm, I'm going to say the same thing, because uh, you can hear that the bay you've got to be careful with, because it's got a lot of low response there. You can get boof, 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 which are coming to you later. So let me say, uh, uh, Susie, Susie, shoeshine girl. 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 So less hypercardioid. Susie, Susie, shoeshine girl. Susie, Susie, shoeshine girl. More. So it seems to be true just from that. You have to be a bit careful with these things. Quite subtle, really. In a, in, in, a, in gig use, the kind of gigs I do, they're not loud, loud. I haven't found too much difference. Might just make the difference, though. So... Would not cause feedback or pick up other instruments. Blah, blah, blah. Would not pick up handling noise. Handling noises, as you heard there, as I was handling them, it's transmitted through a large PA that can be quite quite a sound. Quite a lot of if you're hand holding the mic. This one doesn't. The microphone itself doesn't really need to be that isolated because they're, they're expecting this to be in a cradle. Though they do supply a solid mount as well, but they're expecting studio mic to be in the cradle, and this cradle is elastic. Uh, you don't hear much there. If I take the bass boost off, bass, if I take the bass cut off, I don't know if you can hear that. Well, computer speakers won't pick that up, but there's through these I can hear a real sort of thunder, rumbling as of thunder. Very much so. That could cause your speakers to max out without you even noticing because you can hardly hear it. But you might take up a lot of amplifier power and you might see the speakers doing that you'll think what on earth is that like with uh, vinyl records if they've got warps sometimes I've looked at the speakers and thought what's going on there I see them doing that but I can't hear because the warps in the vinyl that's why I have a warp filter sometimes on uh, analog replay to cut that out so I'm cutting it out here so you're left with just normal handling noise pretty well controlled actually for that let's hear the SM58 SM58 handling noise so you can hear that these are reasonably well controlled comes through the cable as well don't forget Watch out for that. The Bayer M88, let's see. Very different sound of handling noise. A lot of lower frequencies, which you might not be able to hear with computer speakers, and some higher up stuff, which the SM58 doesn't have. Let's look at our little cheapy. Apart from the buzz, well. So I don't know how much this might cost, but you know, I'm not knocking it. Maybe it cost five pence, I don't know. Next thing on the list was would, was would withstand stage abuse. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to throw these around and see if they still work. Here's one of the compromises, then, it, is, as, as you could imagine, if the diaphragm's really light to respond to all this stuff, if you drop it, it's more likely to rupture, to tear. Um, so that's one of the compromises. If you want a really tough mic, you're maybe going to find that it doesn't have as much clarity as you might like because you know the, the diaphragm's made of leather i'm joking but you know the diaphragm made of leather you could drop it a thousand times but what would it sound like so these are all the balances that manufacturers are, are faced with in trying to make their particular mix these are known it's an old bayer m88 for being more fragile yeah, but to be a bit careful with them but this has survived 40 years or so and so have the others that i've got so and it was dropped, not by me. It's dropped twice by other people. So think before you lend your mic to people. Would respond to the tiniest whisper and handle the loudest yell. The tiniest whisper, which this one's responding to. If you, I don't know if you can hear it. Until it so I hear the audio, I don't know. Looks like it. It's in 58. Yeah, it's doing all right. Bear 
doing all right as well. Detail up there, detail up there, going back to the road. Detail up there, detail. You can hear straight away. I mean, I'm not going right, to compare these. It's a stage mic, it's a studio mic, but you can just hear, can you not? Perhaps that's um, just capturing more of everything. Whether you want that or not is another matter, mind you. This is back to the uh, M88 Dynamics. Dynamic microphones have a certain sound to them. Condenser microphones are generally um, more open. But do you want that? Back on this one. Aha. Uh -huh. Pops and breath. Pops and breath. Yes. Pops. Okay. We had in the other video, I said the blast of breath hitting the diaphragm. Use this one. Why not? It's here. People. People. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. It's not bad because I've um, cut the bass. Mm -hmm. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. Let's bring the bass back in. You may not be able to hear this because it's low and certainly not on uh, computer speakers, possibly through headphones. The owl and the pussycat. The owl and the pussycat. Oh, so that one, that P I heard, this, these headphones didn't, didn't like it. Hit the end stops or something. The owl and the pussycat. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. The owl and the pussycat. This does a good job of breaking up that blast. The owl and the pussycat. The owl and the pussycat. So I'm going to take the bass cut. I'm going to put the bass cut back in because we're not listening for that particularly with this mic. Let's, uh, breath. There's breath. I'm not going to blow into this because they don't like it. Condenser microphones don't like moisture. But you can hear. I'd have to be a bit careful of saying free, free, uh, Susie, Susie, shoe shine girl. Free, free. It's okay. SM58, the owl and the pussycat went to sea. Quite well controlled. The owl and the pussycat went to sea. The owl and the pussycat. Things you can do to avoid those peas. I'll get onto that in microphone technique. Barrett, M88 goes a lot lower, I can hear already. The owl and the pussycat. So there, with this mic that goes low, you've got to be careful. The owl and the pussycat. The owl and the pussycat. Pussycat. If I do that, it's a bit of a thump. F. Freedom. 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 Not too bad. Both of them on. Freedom. 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 Very middly, the SM58, really. Back on the road. Hmm. Would be fast. <sighs> Difficult one, that. I think the condensers are faster. I think they've got a lighter diaphragm. Well, I pretty much know they have. That's why they have a lighter diaphragm. So they're faster. They can respond quicker. They can go between notes without sort of blurring between them a bit. The dynamics have got their slightly blurry thing going on. Here's a very modern dynamic. Let's, uh, sorry to jump about a bit. It's a Bayer, Bayer, Bayer V90D, I believe it's called. V70D, sorry. So this has got neodymium magnets. It's a modern one. So let's just uh, swap that out for the Bayer M88. This does sound faster. It's got sorts of stuff going on in, in it. And it's got near dimming magnets, I say. So also, it's going to be a lot louder with the near dimming mag magnets. See if we can hear that. Get rid of the room mic. This is the SM58. This is the Bayer. Yeah, so it's, I've got to bring that down from the Bayer before. Again, it's got a, a more of a expanded bandwidth. I don't know if you can hear that. I find the top there t t t t a little bit edgy. It's got something going on, dual diaphragm or some, something a bit maybe like the new Shure. But it's certainly got the proximity effect. I like the proximity effect, so you can, you've can got to be very careful with it. There's a version of this with the proximity, that bass thing reduced. I quite like to keep it because I like to use it, but you have to be careful. Here's the SM58. bit edgier at the top that might help with cutting even if I'm speaking I can hear the owl and the pussycat went to sea on a beautiful in a beautiful pea green boat they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note the owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note wrapped up in a five pound note bigger is it not 
more sensitive, so you can have the gain turned down more on the amplifier. Hypercardioid. So the idea being, get rid of the SM58 and everything else, just this one. So the idea being that we're on axis, we're to the side here. Wow, quite a lot of reduction there for the side. You wouldn't get breath noise because it's, you wouldn't get breath noise. It doesn't, it's noisy at the side, but it doesn't matter because the side is going to be just, it's not going to be people singing into it. It's going to be just sound spilling from the speakers and so on. So there it is at the side. And then when we come back to the back of it there, you can hear it picks up quite a bit. That's, but when it comes around to the side, it's quite dead there. So that's the whole idea of the hypercardioid. And there it is on axis. So this gets a bit ridiculous. Let's see if we can have any idea of fast. I'm going to use what I call the king of microphones, which is the Earthworks, which I've noticed is fast, phantom powered. It's a completely different type of mic, so not fair comparison. I'm not trying to be fair anyway. Phantom power on. Wait for the mic to stabilize. I'm going to turn it down. This is extremely powerful. This one's the most powerful mic, delivers the most volume of any of the mics I've got. Quite extraordinary in some say. So I'm going to turn that down before I uh, engage it. Just creeping the volume up with this one. Have we got it now? Yes, I can hear it's coming in. There it is. So let's get rid of the room mic. Now we're on the Earthworks. Now we're on the Earthworks, giving just a little bit more volume. We're on the Earthworks. Yes, let's compare to the 58. Complete. Um, just for speed, really. SM58 is on. Let's do that. Now it is. So I don't know how we're going to. They get a bit of phasing if I have the two together. So I'm going to hold them away. So I don't know. Roundabout. I don't know. Roundabout. Roundabout. I can. It just feels. It just feels to me that it's quicker. It just feels to me that it's quicker. Whereas this is a little bit blurry. This seems to delineate more. Certainly got a more of a bottom end. Certainly got more of a bottom end. It's got a papery bottom end. Hmm. <laughs> There we go. But, you know, price difference is uh, phenomenal, so let's not. It's just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that go on. So I hope this bit has been, I hope it hasn't been too much of a mess jumping about all over the place. I'll try and edit that out. And um, I hope it's been of some use to give you the kind of ideas why the microphones aren't perfect and what you're dealing with then with them. And then the next video we'll look at microphone technique in a similar sort of way. Magical, wonderful.